Saudi Arabia has stunned the world once again with the planned construction of the tallest building in the world. Not only will this eclipse the Burj Khalifa, it will be over twice its height and soar two kilometers into the sky. However, the news was met with a wave of skepticism. So far, Saudi Arabia has failed to meet expectations on the Line and Jeddah Tower, an unfinished skyscraper half the size of the new one they've planned. But could this be the moment that Saudi Arabia proves their critics wrong? And is it even possible to build two kilometers into the sky? In this video, we'll explore Saudi Arabia's ambitious plans, but also wonder what life would be like two kilometers into the sky. Although this building has been announced, there has been very limited details of exactly how they will build this highly ambitious project. What we do know is that pitching to the Saudi government on this project were some of the biggest architecture studios in the world, including Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, the masterminds behind the Burj Khalifa, and Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, who designed One World Trade Center. However, the firm that won the bid was Foster & Partners, who are probably best known for envisioning the Gherkin in London. It's estimated that this building is going to cost $5 billion. Yet for now, this skyscraper is merely blueprints on a page. Saudi Arabia has not released the renderings yet, so imagining what this will look like has been left to experts everywhere. Despite all of the speculation, one thing is for certain, Saudi Arabia is relentlessly looking to build bigger and better. In recent years, the country has been eager to diversify its economy and move away from oil. Saudi has kept a close eye on their neighbors in the UAE and witnessed the meteoric rise of Dubai, transforming from a fishing village to a tourism magnet. And one factor driving tourists in their droves is the allure of the Burj Khalifa, the current tallest building in the world. So, it would make sense for Saudi Arabia, which has far more money than its Emirati neighbors, to build an even taller building. However, this ambitious new project is haunted by unfinished mega-projects of the past. Despite the incredible hype surrounding Neom, Saudi Arabia recently announced plans to temporarily scale it down by a staggering 98.6%. And when it comes to building large skyscrapers, Saudi Arabia have also disappointed on this front too. Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia was once poised to be the tallest building in the world by 2015, but almost a decade later, construction is still incomplete. This skyscraper and the peculiar story behind it could serve as a cautionary tale and sign of things to come for their proposed two-kilometer high tower. Construction on Jeddah Tower was announced in 2011, and this audacious project made similar headlines in the press. It plans to be one kilometer high, which is only 170 meters taller than the Burj Khalifa. Saudi Arabia even hired the same architectural firm, Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, to design it. Its design was similar to the Burj Khalifa and contained the same hexagon of steel buttresses along the bottom and foundation piles that are up to 360 meters long. This foundation was inspired by the desert flower, the Hymenocalosaur spider lily. Jeddah Tower was expected to have a sky terrace on the 157th floor where visitors could experience breathtaking views of the Red Sea. But as of 2024, this has still not been completed. However, the most striking revelation from this project is that it was not cancelled because it couldn't be done, but because of financial, political, and labor issues. Ultimately, it was still possible to build one kilometer into the sky. In fact, construction has apparently restarted in September 2023. But what about their latest skyscraper? Could humanity build two kilometers into the sky? Well, some experts have come up with some rather surprising answers to this question. In an interview with Construction Briefing, Peter Weismantel, a consulting director at Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill, simply said, two kilometers is reasonable. Is it the limit? I doubt it. It seems that with current construction technology, the sky is the limit, provided your pockets run deep enough. With a building of this magnitude, the biggest problem is the wind. According to Weismantel, weight is a good thing in a tall building because it counteracts some of the wind forces. In tall buildings, even in earthquake zones, you design for the wind. And if you can design for the wind, then the seismic usually takes care of itself. When the wind hits a building, it excites it perpendicular to the direction of the wind because of the vortex shedding. Concrete is really good because of its mass. It gives a natural dampening. Similarly to Jetta Tower, the question is not whether this skyscraper is technically possible to build, but whether it is feasible, and money is the key reason why there have been no skyscrapers that have overtaken the Burj Khalifa. As well as payments for labor and building materials, skyscrapers of this size need to use a large amount of land at the bottom to support the structure. This is why the tallest buildings are now in the Middle East and Asia and not in cities where land is incredibly expensive, like New York, London, or Paris. According to Wisemantle, in order to build tall, you have to build a big building in the sense that it has a lot of area, a lot of surface area, and a lot of floor area. That is money, and the taller you go, the more the cost per square meter goes up. The Burj Khalifa site is approximately 105.6 square kilometers and encompasses the tower, the office annex, the pool annex, and the parking areas. 
So assuming that Saudi's building is over twice its size, then this could mean that it needs twice the surface area of the bottom, which would be over 210 square kilometers. According to this logic, you would need a base the size of the city of Stuttgart in Germany to build this high. But obviously, with new technology, a base of this size might not be needed. But the most expensive aspect is the length of time it takes to build. If it takes five years, then the construction gets more expensive with each passing year and could be interrupted by an economic recession. In order to build these things anywhere near efficiently, you have got to build them quickly. And quick for a super tall means about five years. That is a long time, especially now with inflation the way it is. You could argue that this building could pay off in the long run. At the moment, the Burj Khalifa generates approximately 697 million euros in ticket sales annually. This makes it the highest generating landmark in terms of ticket revenue globally, and primarily because it holds the title of being the tallest building in the world. While this two-kilometer high tower seems very impractical, the sheer size is sure to draw in visitors. However, it might be the case that two kilometers is too high for humans. If a person worked on the top floor, they would be expected to take a two-kilometer elevator ride every morning. During this trip, this person will be bombarded with lots of other people stopping and getting off during this journey. The bigger the building, the more elevators it needs. But more elevators means less overall space. But more importantly, humans are not naturally supposed to live simultaneously at different heights. When people fly from a flatland area like Chicago to a highly mountainous area like the Rockies in Colorado, they feel disorientated. According to Wisemantle, when you fly from Chicago to Denver, you are going up to 1,600 meters. It takes you a day to acclimatize and it is not unusual to get headaches and to feel tired. If you are going to build a building like that, you would better make sure it is a vertical city where you don't have to keep going from ground level to your apartment or office. You want to live within a zone. But people don't want to be sealed in their building all the time, they want to get out. So that is one of the biggest constraints. For example, something as simple as going out to lunch will not be easy when working at the top floor of this building. So what would these buildings look like if this was possible? Without any design plans, there is only speculation. But judging by its size and scale, there are many possible ways in which this could be designed. For the foundations, the building could replicate the structure of the Burj Khalifa, which has seen no issues with its structure since its completion in 2010. The building could also take inspiration from the second tallest building in the world, Shanghai Tower. Interestingly, Shanghai's outer enclosure twists 120 degrees as it spirals upwards. This gives it a sleek and futuristic look, but also reduces wind load by 24%. This unique design saved the building from using 20,000 metric tons of steel. In terms of how the building will look aesthetically, we could speculate on this based on the architects involved. As mentioned earlier, Foster & Partners are also the designers of the Gherkin in London but also the Hearst Tower in New York City and the HSBC building in Hong Kong, all of which have a futurist feel that incorporate a lot of glass and steel. And perhaps this signature style will also be used in the next building. At the moment, there is not enough information to go upon to conclude whether this will be a success or not. But currently, Saudi Arabia has a fairly poor track record of delivering upon its mega projects. While the skyscraper is certainly possible, and Saudi Arabia will not be short of money anytime soon, many experts are of the opinion of they'll believe it when they see it. However, be sure to subscribe to this channel so we can fill you in on any further updates. But what do you think? Do you think that this building will be successful? And even if not, do you believe that humanity should use buildings that reach 2 kilometers into the sky? Thanks for watching.